Fast moving and potentially dangerous storms continue to march across southeast Michigan, putting several area counties under warnings. A live look right now at some of the damage already done. High winds bringing down some trees and have knocked out power to more than 115,000 Metro Detroit homes. Yeah, when the trees come down, there goes the power. The severe weather tops our news here at 6. Let's take a look at the DTE outage map. About 116,000 customers are without power. As you can see from the map, the orange, yellow, purple, green, a lot of areas with problems. Ben Bailey is using Storm Tracker 4 to get the most accurate track of the path of these storms right now. Ben? Yes, Sandra, and that map showed exactly what we had been uh, tracking is that a lot of those more damaging storms rolled through parts of Livingston and Oakland counties. Uh, as of right now, though, here's some good news. We only have one warning. Uh, that is remaining here on Storm Tracker 4, and that's for that portion of St. Clair and Macomb County uh, that does include uh, the far east side. You can see that the uh, radar showing that some pretty intense rainfall still with these, but, and there still could be 60 mile per hour wind gusts as they advance to the north. Uh, also, I should point out that even though most of Wayne County has been canceled out of that warning, there's a small sliver of the gross points there right along Lake St. Clair, which is still under a severe thunderstorm warning as we speak. But otherwise, a lot of these other storms have weakened considerably, but they have rolled over the same spots in multiple locations. And when we look at the six hour rainfall totals, anything over green is over one inch. You see some of these spots have already picked up more than two, maybe as much as 2.9 inches of rain. And again, those are radar estimates from the thunderstorms, and there are still more to go. Even though some of these storms are weaker, they're still packing a lot of tropical moisture. You felt that humidity from earlier today, and you can see on Storm Tracker 4 that there's still a lot to come there, or I should say some, uh, still yet to come out of uh, northern parts of Ohio. Severe thunderstorm watch remains in effect for all of us until 8 p.m. After that, we can start seeing uh, some more uh, more uh, some weather that's going to slow down just a little bit. And we'll talk more about that and how things are going to change for the weekend in just a few minutes, guys. All right, thank you, Ben. Tim Pamplin has been out chasing the storm to give us a look at conditions and some damage. He is in Oakland Township right now. Tim. Yes, Steve, it didn't take long. Remember at 5 o'clock it was partially sunny with the clouds rolling through while well, the damage is done. This is Adams Road, just south of Orion Road, uh, Oakland Township. Rochester Fire Department on the scene. Massive power outages in the area after power poles come crashing down along with trees here. I'm just above the, uh, this bridge is the Paint Creek under here. This tree was actually lifted up from the Paint Creek and deposited on Adams Road. As I zoom in down here now, you'll see utility poles bent, snapped, wires down all along Adams Road. Oakland Township, Holly, Clarkston, Northern Oakland County hit particularly hard tonight. We're going to stay on it over the complete update coming up at 11 o'clock tonight. Back to you guys downtown. Trees down, power lines down. Right now, DTE estimates over 120,000 customers are without power due to these severe storms. And right now, they're also urging everyone, charge your device and try to be patient. So our crews will be staged and ready to respond as quickly as we possibly can. Um, we will be going through our priority list of hospitals and services like that that we need to make sure are restored. However, please be patient with us and understand that we are all customers too. We understand what it's like to lose power um, and we will do everything in our power to get you back as quickly as possible. We also know DTE has brought in extra crews specifically to deal with those town down power lines. Now, if there is one in your yard, another reminder, you never want to go near it. Just call DTE right away. And with this severe weather threat, the local forecasters app becoming an even more powerful tool right now. It provides live radar up to the minute alerts right there in the palm of your hand, and you can download it for free in your app store. Just search WDIV. Despite the arrival of some severe weather, protesters did march in Detroit today, marching against racial injustice and police brutality. The group was a bit smaller and went on a shorter march in order to beat some of the incoming storms. The group behind the protest says that they will now not be holding rallies the next two days. They plan to take a break, recharge, and then come back with a larger rally come Saturday. Turning now to the ongoing battle against coronavirus, and while some other states are seeing big spikes, Michigan's numbers still remain pretty steady. Yeah, the state reports 13 more people have died. That brings our total to 5,711. There are 171 new cases for a total of 59,278. 
Tonight, a Michigan lawmaker speaking out, hoping the governor will overhaul the Michigan Unemployment Agency. He is Representative Luke Meerman. He wants the top boss of UIA removed and technology upgraded as thousands continue to have some issues collecting benefits. Here's consumer investigator Hank Winchester. I know so many of you have had big problems dealing with the Michigan Unemployment Insurance Agency and some lawmakers, they have had enough. They want big changes to happen now. I think we need new leadership at the unemployment agency, and I don't say that lightly. This state rep, one of about 20, who is fed up, fed up with Michigan's unemployment insurance agency and the problems many Michiganders have been having. I don't know what else to do for the people that keep calling and calling and calling our office. Um, they're so gracious, they're so nice to me, but they literally have not got a check since March. They not only want the top boss at the unemployment insurance agency out, but they want to see big changes, changes to technology that could help people that have been struggling with the system. We've had now a month and a half, almost two months, to try to get the system in a better position. And as I've seen it not getting a better position, and frankly, uh, for the people that are trying to call in get worse, that's why I think it's broken and we need somebody to come in with a fresh perspective. Right now, about 350,000 Michiganders have their benefits on hold as investigations get underway to look into identity theft and fraud. It is a huge problem and one that is causing many concerns for not only lawmakers, but people across the state. I have more information about the Michigan unemployment system, some tips to help you navigate some of the issues that many of you are experiencing right now. I've posted everything you need to know, and it's right on the Help Me Hank page at clickondetroit.com. I'm Hank Winchester. Help Me Hank. A well-known Southeast Michigan restaurateur headed to court in a most unusual case. He's suing former employees for less than flattering assessments of his operation. Business editor Rod Maloney spoke with Adam Merkel and one of the women he's suing. If there's anything we've learned in the modern era is that posting on social media can get you fired from a job. But this case is going to test whether after you've left the company, you can still be sued for posting on social media. For more than two years, Kristen Kraft tended bar at Howell's Cello Restaurant. I liked my job. Adam Merkel owns Cello and a couple of other Howell eateries, the Silver Pig and Diamonds. When the virus hit, he laid off his staff. He applied for and received a PPP business loan and called staffers back to work. It was a very sensitive time and we knew that was going to be the case. So, um, you know, we offered everyone their job back and anyone who who couldn't uh, or, or didn't didn't want to, they didn't have to. Whether Merkel likes it or not, he doesn't get to choose if I felt forced to work. Kristen found other former Merkel employees on Facebook and the chats began. And there were some very nasty things said, some, you know, very uh, deliberate, you know, attacks on, on certain individuals within the company. I'm curious how it's defamation if, if the information being provided is factual. Merkel says she and at least three other former employees attacked and it cost him big time. But we saw an instant drop um, in sales by almost 50 percent. Um, that week and it's continued since. First, Adam asked for the Facebook post to stop. They didn't, so he sued. Kristen posted the paperwork. A closed Facebook community ensued, as did the chaos. It would be phenomenal if we could just drop the suit. This is the last thing we would want to be involved with, you know. It's not like this is going to be a big dollar damages lawsuit in that the only deep pockets lie within the restaurant chain. And so the larger question becomes what will happen on Facebook and whether the restaurant can get its name and reputation back. We'll have to wait and see. Rod Maloney, Local 4. And now how police are seeking terrorism charges against the person who threatened to burn the city down on social media. You might remember this last month, the Twitter user Awau Demia tweeted, the first city to burn in Michigan should be Howell, all in favor say I. That account has since been deleted. The Livingston County Prosecutor's Office is still reviewing that case. The historic flooding caused by the failure of two mid-Michigan dams left some Metro Detroit property owners with their property in a state of disrepair. Now people who've lost their cottages or retired homes are facing frustration as they reach out for help. Local Ford defender Sean Lay explains why they're feeling abandoned by their insurance companies and the state of Michigan. 
They say they're heartbroken. Metro Detroiters who lost their cottage up north in the mid Michigan dam failures. They're still reeling tonight, telling the local four defenders they feel absolutely forgotten. I mean, this was going to be our retirement home because we thought that we would retire in the next couple of years. Well, that's gone. We won't be retiring in the next couple of years. Julianne Vanamy telling the local Ford defenders she and so many others from Metro Detroit are heartbroken. Their summer cottage is destroyed when the Edenville Dam failed in May. Vanamy lives in Northville. She and her husband's retirement home is in Beaverton, and the flood damage to the home is stunning. The one thing you told me is that you feel forgotten. Is that correct? The governor did not include us initially in the state of emergency. Vanamede also feels forgotten by her insurance agency, saying they checked time and again if they were covered for anything that came their way, and they were told yes. Now the insurance company is telling them this. An act of God. They called it an act of God, but in reality, this is not an act of God. This is an act of somebody not maintaining their property. Uh, Boyce Hydro has not maintained those dams for almost two decades. The Michigan Department of Environmental Great Lakes and Energy doesn't think it was an act of God. The state now suing dam owner Boyce Hydro. But at a hearing today about the dam failure, still no answers for people who lost so much. So, you know, we know there's a lot of questions and I know we all want answers. So what caused the failure and who's responsible? Um, I'm committed to ensuring that we receive those answers. Now, it's been weeks since the dam failures in mid-Michigan. Julianne tells us the only help that has come down her lane there in that area has been teens from church groups doing very good volunteer work. But Julianne and her husband, they have joined a class action suit against the state and against the dam owner. Sean Lake, Local 4 Defenders. New at 6. Restaurants and bars were able to reopen on Monday, but some bars like this one have remained closed. I'll explain why. Severe thunderstorm warning remains into effect for at least parts of the east side you see here in the St. Clair County and Macomb County until 7 p.m. That's the last warning that we are tracking, although there are still multiple thunderstorms that have popped with more activity going on in the western portion of the state. Is that going to have an effect on us tonight? We'll look at that and what's to come beyond the storms next.